Okay, everybody back? Yes, sir. Back. Okay, <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna, we'll, we'll finish up uh, hurricanes uh, next week. Um, but uh, what I wanted to do for our last little bit here is just talk about um, case studies. So I am going to, where is my chat? Here it is. So here's a link to, um, I just grabbed everybody's uh, case studies, put them in a folder, and you guys can take a look at it. I'm not trying to say anybody did a bad job or anybody did a super awesome job, but a lot of you guys did a, did a, it was a great start. But I just wanted to, since this is the first time we've done this exercise, I don't have any models to show anybody. I don't have any, temp, uh, I made that template, but I don't have any, you know, completed versions to show you guys. Um, I'd like you guys to take a, a glance at um, what some of your fellow folks submitted and just want to talk about it and, and talk about, uh, you know, so we're all sort of on the same page in terms of, of what we're um, expecting. So, so if you guys could click on that link and it, it's just going to take it to a folder with, with some of the PDFs in there. Um, but while we do that, I want, uh, Ollie was asking me before the break um, about uh, people's uh, perception of um, of acceptance of climate change and things of that nature. And, and his question was, hey, so in places like Louisiana or Florida that are having these hurricanes, uh, well, actually, Ali, why, why don't you, uh, if, would you, would you mind re-asking your question just so I, I don't misstate it? Yeah, um, so uh, places like uh, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, like these places, um, they're known for having hurricanes and severe natural disasters. Why is it hard for people to believe that these natural disasters are going on? And in a sense, like believe that climate change is a factor. I should have stated that more clearly. No, it's all good. So before I give my response, anybody want to take a stab at that? Why, how come there isn't 100% acceptance of climate change induced intensification of hurricanes, for example? Uh, in on the Gulf Coast, let's say. Sorry, you said why is there not acceptance of it? Or yeah, so all, all he was asking, how come everybody isn't isn't totally one hundred percent down with it? Politics. Joe says politics. Anybody else have any other alternative guesses or or additional supplemental ideas? Maybe religion. Possibly. So political stuff. So worldviews. So we're talking about worldviews there, like our, our, our yeah. pre-existing worldviews are one way. Yeah. Okay. Other other guesses or other thoughts? I took a climate change denial class up at SSU and uh, my uh, head of ESRM was talking about how people just like to deny stuff that scares them. Like, they just don't want to accept that it's a probability that's going to affect them at some point. So it's better to just shove it to the back of your head. Yeah, I mean, so I, I guess the, the first thing I would say with regards, so all those, all those things you guys have posited are, are there. Oh, Holly says her mic isn't working. Um, but she says, uh, access or upbringing uh, access or upbringing to information and stuff might or, or there's another factor and, and yes that's correct i guess the first thing i would say is um well first i would say uh we are extremely weird right we're very um different from most of the planet right so the u.s is this weird bubble there's sort of some weirdness in australia there is some weirdness in a couple Eastern European countries here or there, but by and large, the vast majority of people across the planet, this is not a, a controversial thing. Um, but the other thing to say is in our own country, for the vast majority of people, it's not a controversial thing, right? So we are much more together on our understanding and the vast majority of people agree that 
climate change is a serious threat, that it's causing us problems, that we need to, we should take these seriously, et cetera. Our own data from here in coastal California uh, suggests it, it varies by year, but it's on the order of 75-ish to 80-ish percent of the people year in, year out. Yep, it's, a, it's an issue. Um, so um, the first thing to say is don't confuse the fact that some people are deniers or some people don't see the link between the changing climate and, and more problematic disasters, more unjust situations for people. Don't, just because some people think that, don't, don't think that everybody thinks that way. Again, the majority of people agree and accept that that is reality. The issue is uh, the political powers that be um, uh, are some of those fight this, right? And some of those throw up roadblocks and so, some of those have denialism and all this and that. Um, and, so, and so the question is, why isn't it 100% of people? Why is it this, this relatively small percentage? And why in some areas of the country is that small percentage a bit bigger than in other chunks of the country? Um, you, we could spend whole classes on just that topic, but um, in my experience, when we have these disasters, the resistance goes down. So wildfire, you know, if you're the victim of wild, uh, especially something like the Thomas fire or the Woolsey fire, these wind driven, these Santa Ana driven uh, wildfires, not, not if some teenagers lit a match in your house or something, but you know, but, but, but that type of situation, people that have lost their homes to hurricanes and things still aren't hundred percent, but they're much more likely to see this as something that is um, a problem. In my experience, the folks that have the deepest sort of commitment to worldviews that say that climate change isn't a problem, they, in places like Louisiana where we work, they, they still say that hurricanes are dangerous and that, and that all these things are a problem. But they'll tend to make excuses as to the ultimate driver, right? Or they'll say, oh, the answer is simply that we need more sediment. To, to put in front of my house so I can raise my house. And then, then we're good. And that's the problem, right? Um, and the, the fact is um, uh, those folks are fewer and fewer as the years go by. And um, I find that most people, when you really talk to them off to the side, like not, not in front of a camera or with in front of a class or something, they pretty much get it. They pretty much get it. But because of existing power structures, existing institutional perceived social pressure, they, um, they won't, or, or, or those, those most in denial won't sort of admit things. <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons why uh, I and, and your fellow faculty members have tried to take on these issues from different approaches. So for example, Dr. Reinemann talks about surfing and the degradation of surfing resources um, that can happen with climate change. You might think like surfing, like what, dude, that's like a bro culture thing or something. Right? But the whole idea is to change up the, shake up the narrative, right? When folks have these, these locked in worldviews, the approach is to talk about wine, how you won't be able to get your Napa Valley wines anymore, how you might not be able to go off-roading in the Oceano Dunes, how you might not be able to surf, uh, you know, these, so, so don't talk about it in some of the old traditional ways that, that tend to shove people into ideological corners. Talk about other things. Talk about uh, the justice. Talk about the recreational opportunities for kids. Talk about air quality of, of their grandchildren. Those approaches tend to be much more collegial. And those approaches, people tend to acknowledge that there, is, there, there are problems. And so that's the way forward, I think. The way, to, way forward is not to sort of constantly be bashing our heads against each other is to, if, if people want to bash our heads, kind of come over here and let's talk about this over here and then, and not bash and, and be more, you know, hand clasped together kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing is it doesn't really matter ultimately. I mean, it, it does matter, but, but if, if 95% of the town moves out because they know they're going to be drowned and 5% remains, that sucks. I would like those 5% of folks to move so they don't die and drown, 
But at some point, if they want to kill themselves, they're going to kill themselves, right? Um, at some point, if they, they, um, I mean, the reality is, is nature bats last, right? So, um, so, and we're seeing that in a lot of these places in, 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 in highly, highly vulnerable areas like coastal Louisiana, where people cannot get house insurance and things of that nature anymore. And so, um, so yeah, so that's happening. That's happening. Um, okay, so cool. So we only have a couple minutes left. So I just wanted to, um, so if you guys haven't yet, can you click on that drive and make sure, can you guys actually see those? Are you guys to just sort of open up those PDFs and just take a quick glance? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so I wanna just uh, show some of these. So, so first, um, did you guys have a chance to glance through those or should I give you guys a quick five minutes to look through those? Maybe a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, I'll give you guys five minutes. Uh, just you know, open each one up. Just sort of skim it. Just sort of look look big picture at it. Um, and again, we're not trying to say someone sucks, someone's great, but let let's look at at see what some of your colleagues have produced, and then we'll talk about it in uh, let's say five minutes. So I got ten thirty five right here. So I'll push pause and I'll come back at ten forty. Um, with the last few minutes here, just wanted to see really quickly how you, what you guys thought of those different examples. So obviously we have different topics. Some of them have more data available, readily available than others, right? So there's that. But in general, what'd you guys think about, um, about stuff? Was there, was there one or two that you guys particularly liked or you thought did a, did a better job than the average? Not really surprising, but yeah, Sabrina's and Gabby's. Mm -hmm. That was probably the best. Yeah, and so why? Why, Joe? Why do you think that they, they were better than? Just had all the information. It was thorough. Yeah, Plus so. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. So again, I'm, I'm not, so again, as, as now that we have some examples to look at and I can provide more guidance, right? I'm not necessarily looking for huge, long write-ups, right? I mean, like, like lots of text. It's more like what happened? What was the deal with this situation, right? So what was maybe the situation right before? How did it play out? What was the, what was the consequence? And so, um, yeah, as much as we can have uh, quantitative data, the better. If maybe we just have like some folks like put in some news stories, maybe some qualitative descriptions of uh, what the disaster was like or what the, what, the, what the aftermath was like or something, that's cool. Right, so so the, I'm, I I think it's I'm looking more for in a case study thing a paragraph, some bulleted sentences kind of thing, as opposed to writing a full essay. So I wanted your guys, I'd like your and as we continue on with this, I'd like your guys' effort to be on finding the objective facts or 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 the firsthand accounts that kind of stuff and putting those in. And you can and definitely need to summarize. We don't just want to randomly throw them in there, but I'm not so much looking for you guys to write a novel on this, more just sort of synthesize it. So, so, so now uh, if Joe hasn't looked at this or Ollie hasn't looked at this topic, he, you know, one of you guys can just go up and like skim it like, oh crap, that's kind of cool, right? That's what I'm thinking in terms of this case study. Um, other, other feedback or other thoughts on that? Okay. So again, the one thing I would just, just point out again is whenever we're doing drafts of things, you guys, it's, it's a complete draft. So I use the word draft in the sense to mean um, uh, not finalized, but that should always mean when we put in a figure or something, what, what the reference is that figure, right? That we have a literature cited section. Um, so, so draft doesn't mean, um, a, 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 you know, the first half of the assignment or a, or a quarter of the assignment. So now that you guys have a first draft, now you can tighten it up. Now you can look at it like, oh crap, I forgot to reference that. And, and you know, you can, you can sort of make it tighter. And so one of the most uh, common things that you guys in general, not here in disasters, but just sort of in general, what I find is when I, in general, in my classes, when I say, give me a draft of something, some people interpret that to mean I'll spend five minutes on it and it's not done yet. So it's a draft. A draft always means a complete draft with, with folks' names and references and, and 
values with uh, you know the units on there and all that kind of good stuff. Cool. Okay, good. Um, so we're almost out of time. So um, so yeah, I guess I would say that uh, uh, these look good. Some of them are also a little bit long. So some of the ones that are that are more detailed are great. I wasn't necessarily envisioning something quite that long, but you guys are welcome to put more more detail if you want in there. But but just making it longer isn't necessarily better, right? We're just looking to make sure you guys hit each of the each of the um, um, categories and each of the, the subtopics and like, yeah, I address that, I address that, and address that. That's cool. Um, so uh, I was writing a paper this weekend with some colleagues and um, I was going through it and and some people were like blah 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 reference blah 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 reference and then somebody was like blah 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 reference 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 there's like 25 references in this one sentence I was like well yeah I mean it's true but maybe we only had to put in three or four there <laughs> I don't know if we needed all 25 there um, so uh, so anyway yeah so good so did you, did you guys have any general questions to me about or, or, or struggles with because it was due right before spring break and then everybody's gone. Any questions for me about, general questions about case studies? I'll try, I'll try to provide some more guidance after this morning, but but was there anything burning that you guys wanted to ask me? I had a question um, and you might've already answered this. I'm sorry if you did, um, but are you gonna provide like um, specific feedback to our drafts? Yes. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah, but I first wanted to have everybody sort of take a glance uh, just to sort of get a, flavor for I think in future years when I teach this class I'm going to give like two or three examples but I didn't have anything to give you guys I felt a little bit weird of giving you guidance but you didn't exactly see what I was hoping to get so yeah uh me and Ali had a lot of trouble finding some of the information for our event because there wasn't a lot of stuff on it right that, Joe remind me which one that was it was the Point Magoo earthquake of 1993. Oh, okay, yeah. And that was like the only earth, like earthquake with stuff we could find for Ventura. But I was just like wondering if there's any uh, like resources that find like more specifics on like Oxnard for that time range. Cause we didn't know the population or the, yeah. well, I could find the population, but like economic factors and stuff. Yeah. And so again, some of these examples will be more intensely studied than others. And so if you guys picked an example that's say more obscure, that you just, you're not gonna, you just you might not be as much data. But I would say um, in the case of the, uh, uh, the uh, earthquake, um, I would look at a USGS earthquake center. Uh, maybe you guys did, um, but so they have some historic records there. Um, I would also look at, um, uh, wait, what year was it you guys were doing? Uh, 1973. Yeah, 73. So I think I would look there at, um, uh, I, th I think they're around then, but um, so you can look at some historic collections. So that the historic, so the USGS kind of repository would have more of the, what the shaking magnitude was like, you know, that kind of deal. I would also consider looking at Ventura County Star, um, the or, or whatever the area is, the local newspaper, one of the local newspapers, if you can go into the historic record. Um, so you can either choose to look at that at, at, the, at the outlet itself. Alternatively, we have some, some newspaper databases in the library that you guys can access by logging on to. You could also try looking, you know, searching the date or searching a you know, a couple days after the, the date. Uh, and then a third one, a third source would be something like um, uh, uh, museums and historical societies. So in our case, I would suggest for the, for the 73 case, I would suggest looking at the um, Museum of Ventura County. Uh, there are others, but I, I, would, I, would try, I would try that one. So, so when stuck, I would first go to the scientific organization or the or the or the government agency that um, uh, is most responsible for that, and not Google searching. I mean, you could try that, but actually going to the the website and searching within that website um, through their tools, uh, either historic database or 
Um, sometimes they do uh, after action reports type of deal or, 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 syn or synopsis. synopsis. Um, you can also, and then a, a fourth one I didn't mention, but of course you can always go to the library and just search in some of the database, some of the peer reviewed journals. And, and that won't show up right after, but on the order of you know, five to 10 years or so after the event, there'll probably be some summary data, some synthesis type of reports. Uh, and then uh, again, the uh, local news, newspapers at the time or, or the, that served the, the area at the time or regional and then uh, local historical societies or, or um, museums are possible sources. Um, and again, sometimes the more obscure thing or something like the Santa Susana situation where there is sort of active trying to hide it, you know, it's, oftentimes it's hard to hide a disaster, right? But, but in some cases with some oil spills or some nuclear accidents, at least early on the, the, the information might be, um, let's see, I don't wanna say people are suppressing information, but they might, there might be uh, not making it easy to see, <laughs> to say like that. Um, and so those situations are obviously going to be, you know, less less data, and I get it, less less uh, specific. So um, so cool, awesome. Okay, so I think we're one minute over. So uh, I will post uh, readings and things like that for this week. We're gonna um, obviously we've started with hurricanes. We're gonna we're gonna do hurricanes for one more week, and and so this is another double uh, double topic that I didn't think would be double, but it ends up being double now that I've actually started talking about it. So um, other than that, awesome. I will see you guys make an appointment at my office hours if you guys are stuck or wonder about anything and I will have everything up and hope you guys have a great week and I hope I'm glad everybody uh, had a safe uh, spring break. All right, thank you.